Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to detect if a directory is mounted or not. So now you might be wondering, like, why would you ever wanna do such a thing? For me, it was to improve my backup script to give me some protection to make sure that I don't accidentally copy hundreds of gigs of files to the wrong drive. And that actually happened to me a couple of weeks ago. You know, if you watched my previous video about WSL2 gotchas, you know, when you plug in like an external USB drive, WSL2 is not going to auto mount that drive. You know, typically you would need to reboot Windows to have that mounted and available to WSL2. So like most things when it comes to software development, you know, usually you get hit by some bug. You know, this is not a bug, but it's like, you know, some type of like edge case or use case that you didn't account for. And then you try to basically automate things so that it never happens again. And that's what we're gonna go over in this video. We're actually gonna briefly take a look at my backup script to see how I prevented this problem. But we're also gonna go over the basics here on how to detect if a directory is mounted or not. So if you run mount-l, you'll be able to see all the different mounted devices you have. So in my case, I have a couple of drives here, right? C through G. F and G are my external USB drives. D and E are my internal drives. And actually it's, it's one drive with two partitions for each of these. And C is my normal SSD. And you'll notice here, you know, there's no other drives that are being mounted. And if I go into like this D drive, for example, and we take a look here, you know, this is the contents of my internal hard drive, right? It's just a spinning disk drive, one terabyte. And the, you know, the permissions are a little bit messed up thanks to WSL, not really respecting Linux file permissions. Might be a little bit hard to read these labels, but it's not too important, right? I have things like, you know, backing up my books and like business stuff and courses and media and things like that. You know, typical things you would want to back up. Now, if I go and create a new directory here, let's just say I make like a new directory called slash Y, inside of uh, just my root file system, and we rerun mount-l here, you know, notice that we're not just gonna automatically get a slash y here, right? It's not mounted, that's just a regular directory on the system. Now, there's another cool command here that we can run called mount point, and we can pass in a path here. So if I actually run uh, slash d on mount point, it is going to say, hey, by the way, you know, slash d is a mount point. But if I rerun that same command on slash uh, y, then it's gonna say that it's not a mount point. So this is the tool that we can use to really quickly detect if a directory is mounted or not. And if we run something like mount, uh, mount point slash D, and we take a look at the exit code of that, you know, the exit code is going to be zero because, you know, the command didn't fail. You know, it is a mount point, so we can assume that things are successful, like the condition is true, like things are good. And But if we rerun this one with the slash Y and we do the same thing, then we get, you know, an exit code of one, meaning that this thing is not a mount point. So armed with this knowledge now, we can go to our backup script and improve it to maybe exit out early if the drive you're backing up to isn't mounted. And that's exactly what I did over here. So if I open up my backup script, and by the way, you know, I have a blog here that I don't necessarily make YouTube videos about all of them uh, because I only really started adding YouTube videos, I don't know, like a year and a half ago, but I've been blogging for like five years. And I just updated this blog post today to go over this change that we're going to go over. But I mean, this was written years ago. But, uh, you know, it's basically if you wanted to have a backup script that uses Bash and rsync to basically just, you know, back up all sorts of different uh, directories that you want to some other drive, then, uh, you know, you can follow along with this blog post. It's, it's very easy. You basically just copy paste this whole entire file and uh, put it into a file, make it executable, install rsync, and you're done. Uh, this whole blog post explains that process. But let's go over, and I'll make sure to link this in the description, of course. So let's go back to Vim over here and take a look how we're using mount point. So all I did here was I modified my script to add this one if condition here that says, you know, if this evaluates to false, basically, you know, if it's not a mount, then we just echo out, like, by the way, this, you know, directory name is not mounted. You know, you can verify this by running mount L and then we just exit one and it's not gonna continue on with the script here that eventually would rsync things over if that, uh, you know, if we didn't exit out early. So in this case, like the target dir name, I'm just, you know, I like to back things up to a backup directory inside of this uh, USB drive. And then I just get the dir name, which basically gives me slash F. So we can just check to make sure if that's uh, a mount or not. Now there is one flag here that we didn't go over, which is dash Q. And if I go back to over here and we just rerun this command with dash Q, it's just not gonna give us any output here. Like, you know, Y is not a mount point. Likewise, if we do the same thing with D, we also get no output. So, you know, a lot of uh, Unix tools have the idea of using like quiet mode. So you just don't get uh, spammed by output. 
right? Because there is the Unix philosophy where it's like no news is good news, meaning like if things were successful, you know, typically you want to have minimal to no output. But I mean, this is, a, you know, a very basic example of how you can apply doing some, something to solve like a real world problem. You know, and now I have the script that it's enhanced and uh, I'm never going to run into that situation again where I accidentally move or copy like hundreds of gigs of files to the wrong drive that like blows up my SSD. So yeah, this is a pretty quick video on how to use mount point. I only learned about this command yesterday, so I figured now's a good time to make a video about that one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Like usual, please give the video a thumbs up because it really helps. And on that note, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.